Hello and welcome to L2R. I'm Kinesthesia and today I'll be going over the strategy for the Twilight Ascendant Council on the 25 normal difficulty. The four planeteers can be found hanging out behind Valion and Theralion, occupying the third boss spot in Bastion of Twilight. Each has an affinity with a different element and you'll need to utilize their spells against them in order to defeat them. Doesn't matter whether it's earth, wind, water, or fire, you're going to need some heart to take down this encounter. The Ascendant Council is one of the most difficult fights in this tier of raiding. There are a plethora of abilities, and the raid will need to understand how all of them work in order to defeat the boss. This is a three-phase fight consisting of five mobs that will test your raid's coordination, situational awareness, and most of all, is DPS. Ignatius and Feludius have around 22 million HP, while Terrastra and Arion have around 14.5 million. In the final phase, they combine to form the Elemental Monstrosity, who has 73 million HP. You'll want to bring two tanks and as few healers as your raid needs. The fight requires high DPS, so the less healers you can get by with, the better off your raid will be. We use five here, but with more gear, it's possible to get by with six or even seven. Feludius and Ignatius will both be active in phase one. Both will use multiple abilities during the phase. Ignatius will cast Burning Blood on a random player. This debuff would deal increasing fire damage over time to that player, but cause all nearby players to deal additional damage to Feludius. He will use Flame Torrent on the tank, dealing around 39,000 fire damage every second for 3 seconds in a frontal cone. Throughout the phase, he will use Inferno Leap to jump away from the tank and immediately use Inferno Rush to come back to the tank. The leap would deal around 25,000 fire damage to any enemies he lands on, and knock them back in the process. The rush back will also knock back players, but more importantly, will leave a trail of fire on the ground that will deal around 5,000 fire damage every half second to any player standing in it. This fire must be utilized to remove Feludius' waterlog debuff, but we'll cover that in a moment. Ignatius' final set of abilities are Ages of Flame and Rising Flames. The first is a shield of flame that absorbs 1 million damage and prevents spell interruption. The second is a powerful AoE that deals increasing fire damage to everybody in the raid until he is interrupted. The shield must be broken before he can be interrupted. Feludius will also use quite a few abilities during this phase. The first is Heart of Ice. This behaves exactly like the Burning Blood debuff, but instead increases the damage nearby players deal to Ignatius. Hydro Lance is a single target ability that hits a random player for 50,000 frost damage. This ability can and should be interrupted. Water Bomb will launch multiple projectiles into the air that hit any nearby targets for around 10,000 frost damage and apply the waterlog debuff to them. This debuff will reduce movement speed by 25% and cause afflicted players to be frozen by Feludius' Glaciate ability. Glaciate is an AoE that deals lethal frost damage to any players close to Feludius. The damage decreases significantly with distance from the boss. The true threat of this ability is that any player hit with Glaciate while afflicted with the waterlog debuff will have the blood in their veins frozen and be hit with the frozen blood debuff. This will freeze the player solid and deal 20,000 frost damage every 2 seconds for 10 seconds. Phase 2 will begin when either boss has reached 25% health. Arion and Terrastra will become active in Phase 2, and each of them have just as many abilities as their Phase 1 counterparts. Arion will start with Call Winds. This ability will summon wandering tornadoes that deal 7,000 nature damage and a short knockback to any players coming into contact with them. Players hit with tornadoes will also receive a debuff causing them to levitate for 2 minutes or until the player hits a gravity well. This is used to avoid Terrastra's Quake ability, which we will go over in a moment. Arion will afflict three random players with the Lightning Rod debuff, causing them to attract electrical attacks. Shortly after gaining this, he will cast Chain Lightning at these players, dealing around 10,000 nature damage to each, and bouncing to nearby targets for increased damage. Throughout the phase, he will use Disperse to teleport to a random location in the room and immediately cast Lightning Blast at the tank, 
This ability deals around 80,000 nature damage and can be interrupted. His special attack is called Thundershock, and it deals around 150,000 nature damage to all players. Players must be grounded from Tarastra's gravity well in order to avoid the damage taken from this spell. Tarastra's first ability is Gravity Well. This force will firmly connect players to the Earth and grant resistance to Thundershock for 2 minutes. This effect will end if the player is hit by a tornado. Tarastra will also use Eruption. Spikes will shoot up from the ground, dealing around 50,000 damage to all nearby players and knocking them into the air. He will also cast Hardened Skin. This increases his physical damage dealt by 100% and decreases damage he takes by 50%. When the barrier shatters, he will be wounded, but the initial cast can and should be interrupted. Tarastra's special is called Quake. This deals around 150,000 damage to all players who are not affected by the tornado's levitate. When one of these two bosses reaches 25% health, Phase 3 will begin. In Phase 3, the four bosses, Ignatius, Faludius, Arion, and Tarastra, will combine to form the Elementium Monstrosity. This tough guy will use only a few abilities, but all are very powerful. Electric Instability is a chain lightning-like ability that will hit an increasing number of targets as the phase progresses. Liquid Ice causes the monstrosity to freeze the ground beneath it. The pools caused by this will grow larger the longer the monstrosity stands in them. Lava Seed will rain flames across the room that explode for around 40,000 fire damage. Gravity Crush traps random players in a gravity bubble and lifts them into the air. They will take damage equal to 10% of their maximum health every half second for 6 seconds. When Gravity Crush ends, they will fall to the ground taking additional fall damage. During Phase 1, your raid will have to defeat Ignatius and Faludius. Have one tank pick up each and tank them across or parallel to each other about 30 yards away. Assign melee to Ignatius and range to Faludius. Healers should stack on the range group which is located about 15 yards away from each boss, but not directly between them. You'll want to assign two melee interrupters to Faludius in addition to the tank. This not only helps to interrupt the Hydro Lance, but also ensures that each of Ignatius' Inferno Leaps will not hit the range in Healer stack. The player with Heart of Ice should make sure to move to the melee stack, and the player with Burning Blood should move to the range stack. This debuff can be dispelled after about 10 seconds, as it will have already applied its beneficial effects to the raid. Each time Water Bombs go out, players should check to see if they have the Water Log debuff. If they do, they must walk into Ignatius' flames momentarily to clear the debuff. The debuff must be cleared before Faludius casts Glaciate. Any players hit with Glaciate while afflicted by the Waterlog debuff will be frozen and take huge damage over time. Spam healing will keep this player alive, but it's best to avoid this altogether. Whenever Ignatius puts up his Ages of Flame, it's important that all DPS switch to him in order to break the shield. This must be broken quickly in order to interrupt the Rising Flames cast. If Rising Flames takes too many times, the raid will wipe. The phase will end when either boss is brought to 25% health, but to most effectively do the fight, both bosses must be as close to or below this mark as possible. Don't hesitate to stop or switch DPS if it looks like one boss is much lower than the other. A good plan is to bring both bosses to around 30% HP then have them burst it down to 25 at the same time. In Phase 2, Arion and Tarastra will become active and Ignatius and Faludius will retreat out of range from the raid. Make sure to use the remaining fire on the ground to clear any waterlog debuffs left on the raid. Arion will use Call Winds almost immediately and the raid should make sure to hit the tornadoes so they can be levitated. Have Melee prepare to interrupt Tarastra's Hardened Skin ability, and Range prepare to interrupt Arion's Lightning Blast. Once the first Quake has gone out on the raid, players should find a Gravity Well to gain the Grounded buff. This will make them immune to Arion's Thundershock ability. Throughout all of this phase, players must be mindful of the Lightning Rod debuff and stay ready to move out if they have it. An effective strategy during this phase is to keep the raid near the inner circle of the room and leave the outer ring open for people to run while they have Lightning Rod. Other players should also make an effort to move away from these debuff players, as chaining the lightning can mean an instant wipe. 
Just like in phase 1, this phase ends when either boss reaches 25% HP. You want to have them both as low as possible, so again, your raid should watch their health bars carefully and switch or stop DPS accordingly. In phase 3, the four bosses will combine and their remaining HP will determine how much HP the Elementium monstrosity has. The lower all four bosses are, the lower the monstrosity's HP will be. This is important because healing in phase 3 will be very difficult, and the shorter the phase lasts, the more likely your raid will be to succeed. Spread out at the very beginning of the phase, the monstrosity will repeatedly cast chain lightning at multiple targets, and spreading out is essential to surviving the ability. In addition to this, he will drop patches of liquid ice on the ground wherever he stands. The boss should be moved out of these to avoid having them grow larger, and melee should make sure not to tread through them. Occasionally, he will line the ground with lava seeds. These explode for a high amount of fire damage and should be moved away from. It should not require more than two steps in any direction. More than that should be considered a DPS loss and be avoided. His final ability is Gravity Crush. This lifts a few random players into the air and deals damage to them until they are released. Make sure to spam heal these players as Gravity Crush can be lethal with no focused healing. This phase is a burn phase overall. Eventually, your raid will wipe to the overwhelming damage, and the key is simply to stay alive long enough for the boss to fall first. Stay spread out throughout the phase, but try to keep movement low. Your tank must be quick to keep the boss out of liquid ice patches, and melee should avoid running through them. It is likely that this fight will take your raid multiple tries, and there may be quite a few low percentage wipes. Don't let these discourage you, as this is quite a difficult fight to take down. Thanks for checking us out here at LearnToRaid.com. We hope this strategy guide was helpful, and we'll see you at the next boss. I wasn't feeling so good. I just didn't feel like playing anymore. So I went home, and I got all comfy and cozy and all scrunched up in front of my phonograph. And I sat there, and I closed my eyes and listened to all the sweet music.